Hello, and welcome to another video lecture for Mr. Mosier's 8th grade U.S. History class. Today is one of our video lectures on the Civil Rights era. We're going to be focusing today on civil disobedience and nonviolence. A change is going to come. The textbook reading for this particular video lecture comes from pages 870 to 874 in the Civil Rights Movement Takes Shape. Kind of our guiding questions today are who was Rosa Parks? Uh, what were the goals of the Montgomery bus boycott? Uh, what civil rights leader emerges from that bus boycott? What is civil di disobedience? And what are the basic rules, three basic rules that kind of go along with civil disobedience? Rosa Parks was a 43-year-old seamstress who will sit in the first row of the black section of a bus in Montgomery, Alabama, and she will be asked to give up her seat by a white patron and will be refused and will be arrested. That's kind of the, the story uh, that has come along with the story of Rosa Parks. What we really, most people don't realize about her was she was a pretty at, a strong advocate for civil rights. She'd been actually fighting for civil rights for quite some time, and most likely this was somewhat staged uh, it, for her to kind of challenge this segregation law on board these Montgomery buses. Um, but regardless, her arrest uh, will start and trigger what becomes known as the Montgomery bus boycott. And this will result in 17,000 African Americans who will refuse to ride the city buses in Montgomery, which was a main mechanism for their transportation from home to work. Uh, and their boycott will be uh, as last as long as they, they can uh, until their demands are met, which was basically their goal of the Montgomery bus boycott was to have whites and blacks treated equally on board the city buses. Now, this boycott will last for a little over a year, and eventually the Supreme Court will come back and rule that segregation of buses is actually a violation of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. One of the important uh, legacies of the Montgomery bus boycott was the emergence of a very young minister who kind of arises as a leader of the civil rights movement. Uh, his name is Martin Luther King. Uh, he will be chosen to sort of lead the Montgomery bus boycott, and he urges his followers to use nonviolence as a form of protest. And through his efforts of the Montgomery bus boycott, uh, he kind of rises to a uh, s status of kind of leadership among the civil rights movements in the 1950s. So he urged nonviolence. So what does nonviolence mean? Well we think about the civil rights movement, one of the great aspects of the civil rights movement was this practice of nonviolent protesting or civil disobedience. Dr. King, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, really gets the idea from an Indian protest in the country of India, not Native American, but in India, uh, Gandhi, uh, who uses civil disobedience as a way to get India its independence. So civil disobedience is basically a form of peaceful protesting that involved sit-ins and boycotts. A sit-in was a form of peaceful protest in which people would occupy seats in a traditionally segregated facility. So African Americans would go sit in white-only sections of like restaurants or movie theaters uh, or stores, and whites would then go to only African American sections uh, as an as a example. Boycotts would mean that you're going to refuse to purchase products from that particular store until basically your demands are met. There are three basic rules to civil disobedience was be friendly, don't strike back, curse back if you're attacked, and don't block entrances. If you think about why would they have those rules, well, again, the ideas of nonviolence is really to take nonviolence and have that as a comparison to the very violent reaction to the civil rights movement. The civil rights leaders were very concerned that if they used violence, then the issue would be their use of violence as opposed to drawing attention to the Jim Crow segregation and discrimination that was being faced. That being said, it was difficult to undergo nonviolence because you were going to be met with extreme overreaction, violence in many cases in these nonviolent protests. So despite resistance, um, though, a lot of these sit-in protests, though, will start making inroads 
as businesses will slowly begin ending some of their practices of discrimination uh, and trying to treat African Americans and whites as equal. So it's a start uh, of the civil disobedience. In our next lecture, we'll kind of look at some of the other major marches and protests that will take place that will kind of bring about two major laws that will come into, into play. So civil disobedience, nonviolence, the idea is to use peaceful protests as a way to kind of illustrate the violence of the problems of segregation and to draw attention to it as a, a mechanism of bringing about change. As always, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.